We're going to prove that if a sequence is monotone, then so are all of its subsequences. We will use this result in a future proof, and it's very straightforward, but I like to be thorough, so let's go through a proof today. I definitely recommend trying to prove this on your own before watching the rest of the lesson. I'll do a direct proof, but you could also take care of this pretty easily with contradiction. And of course, it should make sense, right? If a sequence is monotone and we were to plot the terms of the sequence, maybe it's increasing and it looks something like this. A subsequence doesn't have to include all of these terms, but it can't shuffle them around. One way to think of it is that a subsequence can only skip terms. It can't reorder them. So of course, any subsequence will also have to be increasing. Anyways, let's jump into the proof. We'll begin with increasing sequences and just very briefly go over decreasing sequences because of course the proofs are practically identical. So we'll say let an be an increasing sequence and ank an arbitrary subsequence. By definition of an being increasing, this means any term an is less than or equal to the next term an plus one. That is the definition. So how can we use that to show that ANK, the subsequence, is also increasing? Well, to prove that the subsequence is increasing, we'll of course need to show that an arbitrary term of the subsequence, ANK, is always less than the next term of the subsequence, ANK plus one. And we'll be able to get there pretty easily. Let's set this over to the side. We can't immediately make a statement relating ANK to the next term in the subsequence, ANK plus one, but we can relate ANK to the next term in the original sequence. How does ANK relate to ANK plus one? Pay attention to how here the plus one is in the subscript with k, here plus one is in the subscript with nk. So this is the next term of the subsequence, but this is the term in the original sequence that comes after this one. So since this is the term of a n following this term, we know that a n k is less than or equal to it because a n is increasing. Then of course, by the same logic, ANK plus one is less than or equal to ANK plus two. And we could continue this string of inequalities as long as we like. We know in a subsequence, if this term comes after this one, then this term also comes after this one in the original sequence. And so this string of inequalities will eventually arrive at a n k plus one, the next term of the subsequence. And of course, the important consequence of this string of inequalities that we're actually interested in is the fact that a n k is less than or equal to a n k plus one. So remember, all we've done is taken an arbitrary term from the subsequence, and then using the fact that the original sequence is increasing, we have these less than or equal to relationships continuing up the original sequence until we arrive at the next term in the subsequence. Again, I wanna point out that these plus ones and plus twos and so on are being added to n k whereas this plus one is being added to k. But that's it. We've shown if we take a subsequence from an increasing sequence, any term of that subsequence will be less than or equal to the next term of the subsequence, and thus the subsequence is increasing. As you can imagine, the changes are pretty much trivial to deal with decreasing sequences. If we wanted to talk about decreasing sequences, we could say let a n be a decreasing sequence. So each term of a n is greater than or equal to the next term. And so when we take an arbitrary term from our subsequence, we'll have that it's greater than or equal to the terms that follow it in the original sequence all the way up to wherever the next term in the subsequence is. And so each term of the subsequence is greater than or equal to the one that follows it. And so the subsequences of a decreasing sequence 
are decreasing. The last two things I wanna point out are that we could state this as a biconditional statement. So we could say that a sequence is monotone if and only if all of its subsequences are. We just proved that if a sequence is monotone, then its subsequences are. But the converse is obviously true because a sequence is a subsequence of itself. So if all of its subsequences are monotone, well, that means it's monotone. And finally, we actually proved something a little bit stronger than what this says. We didn't just prove that if a sequence is monotone, then so are its subsequences. That could mean that an increasing sequence has decreasing subsequences. That's not what we proved. We proved that increasing sequences have increasing subsequences and decreasing sequences have decreasing subsequences, just like we'd expect. The Cupid twirls blind from the cracks of the bells, the arches spread low.